We know in, in the cloud services, we have three types of services. We have IA, AS, or infrastructure as a service. It can be Google Compute Engine or Google Cloud. We can talk about Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure or IBM Cloud. These are like the infrastructure. And the same for us, we need infrastructure to run our containers and everything on that virtually or on the cloud. So we have PaaS or PWA. Double AS or platform as a service like Google App Engine or like Red Hat OpenShift, those and stuff, and also SaaS or software as a service. We can talk about Jira, Dropbox, or HubSpot. Here, for our purpose, we're gonna stick to this one Google Compute Engine. If you want to do that, so just easily we're gonna search con console cloud google.com. And the first website will come up. It will be like that. So automatically, it comes to the company that I'm working for at the website. But um, in, let me make it a little smaller for you. Yeah, you can see my like stuff here and like my notifications, everything. But apart from that, this is like the first page. So you're gonna have it. You're gonna create uh, an account on that. It is connected to your Gmail account actually, but you're gonna activate this one. So we have uh, the Google Compute Engine, we have the Cloud Storage, we have the Kubernetes, we have Google Cloud Run. It depends what you want to do. Google Compute Engine, the good thing related to this one is uh, you can deploy your Docker containers on that. So it, it is the uh, like a benefit of that, but we're gonna run ours we're not going to deploy something but when you click on that you're going to have this with these ip addresses like uh your internal ip address and your external which is a like a public ip address uh, i adjusted just the size of the screen to make it a little bigger we come here click on create an instance then it gives us the option first thing is coming up with the name so i'm going to say my google instance the name is okay but there is something if you make it capital like that it doesn't accept so the instance name should be just like that then uh, the region by default Google it uh, recommended or like I would say it chooses the cheapest option for you so we can stick with the Google recommendation the cheapest option or if you ch want to change it, just bear something in mind. Don't go too far. For example, I'm in Canada, in Toronto. So like Malaysia or Indonesia or like I would say Australia, those like far places are not my choice. Why? Because of maybe like routing problems or those stuff. Will If something happens, intercontinental stuff, you're going to be disconnected. Stick to the choice and here it says okay what do you want to do it is based on our purpose so we're just gonna have a dashboard it could it, it couldn't be like a compute optimized not just a general and the type of the uh, the the platform it depends on the service that you are getting so for general purpose e2 is the good one if you want to learn more just read the google document but for our purpose that's enough type of the cpu for our purpose again it's just the micro CPU is enough. I'm gonna stick to the small one. And the difference is on the RAM. The first one has four, this one is two and this one is one. And as you see, the price decreased because we changed the type of the CPU. Stick to the something easier. We come here for the boot disk. So for the boot disk, uh, not Debian actually. Ubuntu is what I want and the version 22 and i'm gonna that this is the hard drive size so select it come back here what else do we have it is counting again so this this default access is enough when you want to start just for the firewall uh, the thing which is enough is just to have the uh, let's say we come like that. I can show you. 
So for firewall, it's just HTTP is enough, but in the, like the last step, we're gonna create HTTPS. So let's click on both of them, but you, you know, we need a proxy server. We have it. So HTTP, HTTPS, and then click on this create. So I waited and I saw this thing here. It says the E to a small instance, it's not available here for my, what should I do? I should sort of dismiss or delete this one, create a new one. I'm gonna do the same procedure, so. Okay, the previous that I've chosen was unavailable. I just changed the zone and created another one. If we want to edit some of the things that we just uh, created, we should come here. I mean, not all of them, but some of them are uh, doable. And the one of them is for HTTP and the one of them is for uh, SSH. I'm going to show you afterwards. The first thing is, if you want to do something, we should come up with set firewall rules or search here, just firewall, and then you come here, VPC network, click on create firewall rules. Then you can come here, set a name for that, name for the rule that you want to do. For example, you, you, you could call it a SIP server port, which is 5060. Then you can come up with a description. It is for input output. You're going to put it on ingress and uh, there's no tag for that. We're going to put it for all instances of the network. Right now I'm going to create something to apply for all of my instances. Then for IP source, it's important. It should be something like that. If you're not going to specify something, but the slash should be there and tcp so the port could be like 50 60 something like that and then you let me call it SIP server we don't have any SIP server right now but i'm just doing something to show you when you hit on the creating it comes here down in the list so i have a uh, there are some of them are like the defaults of your machine like default a lot SSH, RDP, internal, ICMP, everything. But the SIP server is the one that I just created. We have Portainer. We'll see that we have InfluxDB, HAProxy, Grafana, and uh, default HTTP and HTTPS. So this default, uh, this SIP server is the one that I just created. So whatever we want to do, we should know that the instance that we are paying for that, the service, it has a firewall. And by default, the ports are blocked. So in this way, we're gonna open the ports. What is the next step? We can, how we can come back, just, uh, let's say engine, just Google compute engine, like a search, come back here. This is the ephemeral uh, external IP address. If we click on this SSH, it gives us a terminal, like the default terminal, and then we can SSH to that and it is cool. So we do not need anything specific here right now. Just by clicking on the SSH, we're gonna have uh, our our like terminal directly right away in front of us just by clicking on that. But this is the thing. Sometimes what do we need? We would like to just SSH from somewhere else, or you are some we are somewhere we're gonna do something fast. Just open a terminal and do the SSH on, from your laptop. You do not have enough time to go to the shell and I don't know, go to the website, uh, start some sort of thing. Just do it fast. Okay, so how I'm gonna do that, just there's a command like this. We're gonna copy and paste it. Uh, SSH keygen dash TRSA. It is the file that you create. It's my sample name, my Google Cloud. So let's say my my key and dash C and your username. So your computer username, which for me, we can see here is my first name, last name. And hit on the enter. So it is generating, you need a passphrase. This passphrase is something for the file. You should remember it. So 
I'm gonna come up with something super duper secure then it creates everything for you so you gave it uh, the path this one just control C uh, let's go inside that CD uh, SSH if I do here clear and do a less so what where we came to this place CD and the SSH and if we do ls what do we have we have our look this one my google cloud key public and my google cloud key this is the previous one that I, I created for my the other instance but these two my key the public file and my key are those that i just created to use for this this instance what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut the my key file the public one this is the file that I have. So I just copy all of that like this and I come back to this one. Click on the Google instance, click on edit as I said and just we scroll down down to find the SSH. SSH we should have something. Look we have some keys here i mean even though we didn't create any what are these for the ssh that we tried from the instance so we can remove them add an item and copy and paste what we copy but something is important here so what is important this here i created the key base on the username on my computer so here it's the username of my computer but uh, on the SSH that we did to the instance, we saw that it has a different name. So the one based on the ID that I created is in underscore my last name. It is important. The username on your computer and your, your, your local computer should be the username of your computer, but the username on the Google instance should be the username of the Google instance. And you just click on save it is saving the same time you come here you do first of all sudo dash s okay and then you do ssh dash i you do ssh dash i when you want to mention a name so we're gonna mention a name and then we are gonna come up with the address of our file so when you're gonna say mention name, i mean the file name and my file name is my key, but uh, when we wanted to add the text, we use the public one, but here not the public one. And uh, let's see what is the IP address. So we come back to our instances. And this is the IP address. So I copy that from here and add sign and paste click on that it said you want to do that you say yes and it asks for this password the, the super duper uh secret that i added so yeah easily we see we have it right now here we just did the ssh from our local machine not from the boot terminal now we want to do the sftp First step, we need a file to create it. So we have nothing here. I'm gonna do win main dash by, and let's say uh, print hello world exclamation mark and wq. So if I do ls, I have my main file. I'm gonna do exit, come out of that, and out of that, then the same command that we did for sftp for ssh then we just change it to sftp again it asks for the password that you did um you are in the shell of sftp how you can send the file that you just created to your local computer the thing is all of the commands are the same for a bit i mean in sftp like the linux command you can do ls it shows you uh, like the file that you have you can do pwd 
and also since you're you're using your local computer terminal to do that it has access to your local computer how you can see the like the working directory by adding l which means local so if you do l pwd it shows where you are in your local computer or if you do lcd so i created this one this untitled folder and i'm gonna just send uh the a main py that i just created here so i'm gonna just come up with the address like that okay if i do lpwd it shows me i'm here and to send the file to the folder i'm gonna use get and um, i'm saying get whatever we have here if we do it and come here we see the file it's just downloaded so let's do something else if i copy that and paste that so it will be copy main i'm gonna rename it to hello dash uh, dot py so by get you can send your data uh to the local computer and by put let's say put hello i mean whatever h e and it is uploading that's so if i do ls now i have both hello and main py so for google engine it is what i wanted to tell you now it, we are done with this video you know how to create a google instance you know how to uh, set up firewall rules you know how to do ssh and sftp to that and we are done for this part